So let's talk first about screening dogs for hypothyroidism. You have a suspicion the animal might be hypothyroid, um, and of course that's the important thing. Start with the clinical suspicion. Many things will lower T4 in a euthyroid dog. They, they're not, it's not falsely lowered, but it's not associated with hypothyroidism. So screening of hypothyroidism without those clinical problems consistent with that disease will lead you to overdiagnosis. And you've seen I've said this several times, so it's an important thing to remember. So what are these screening tests? We'll start with describing the criteria we're going to use for tests. And the, the first is sensitivity. So uh, it, this is the fraction of cases which are actually positive that are labeled as positive by the test. And so any test that is that you want to have as a screening test should have a high sensitivity. And so we'll be looking for a high value for these when we start for this uh, criterion when we start looking at diagnostic tests. The other one that we often use is specificity, which is a fraction of euthyroid animals that have a value in the reference range. And so a confirmation test, good confirmation test, should have high specificity. So let's take a look at the three primary individually measured analytes, total T4, total T3, and TSH. And let's look at them individually on the basis of these two criteria. This is based upon data that's been in the literature for over 20 years now. But our observations now are still consistent with this. First of all, T4, uh, the sensitivity suggests that around 89-90% of total T4, if it's in the normal range, you can rule out hypothyroidism. And this, the asterisk for that second study suggests that you can almost always rule it out if you then uh, also test for total T4 antibodies. And if those cases are removed, this creates a very a sensitive test, so this, that in that case, it's close to 100% being the case that if T4 is normal, remember how I'm posing this, T4 is normal, then it's not hypothyroidism. Not that T4 is low, then it is hypothyroidism. We'll talk about that in a minute. We want you to also see the specificity of total T4 is in the 75-80% range. T3 sensitivity is very poor. So a low T3 doesn't, doesn't, isn't very helpful. Uh, if, it's, if it's combined with a low T4 or an elevated TSH, it can be more specific. Now TSH, the, it's important to note in this case that we're looking for an elevated elevation of TSH, that an elevated TSH is only where anywhere from 76 to 87% sensitive. That means that uh, even though in human medicine, all they do is measure is a TSH, and if it's elevated, then you're probably hypothyroid, and so it's close to 100% in the human. We have a much lower value. In some studies, it's even lower than 70%. It might be 65%. And what this tells us is that TSH may not be elevated in certain cases, and that's important to know. The specificity, however, if you look down in the column below, is is higher and so we'll we'll be talking about using TSH to confirm hypothyroidism more than we will be to make use it as a screening test where we tend to rely on the measurement of total T4 uh, maybe occasionally free T4 but which you haven't talked about yet before we go any further we need to understand that there are many things that can alter total T4 values usually to the downside so Certain breeds, like sighthounds, will have lower free T4 and total T4. Age, T total T4 falls with age. Illness, total T4 falls with the severity of illness. We call this non-thyroidal illness. Uh, and certain drugs, which uh, will, will tend to lower um, thyroid hormone, particularly if they're uh, drugs that impair binding of thyroid hormone to uh, serum binding proteins. And so all of these are parameters that can lead to lower T4 that are not associated with hypothyroidism. 
And we have one that will actually increase, and that's obesity. Obesity has been shown um, probably strong, more strongly in the cat than in the dog, that total T4 and free T4 can be higher in that situation, even though there's not hyperthyroidism in this case. It's simply associated with, uh, we think, a possible thyroid hormone resistance in severe, usually severe obesity. Okay, um, there was a recent study done of 207 dogs with non-thyroidal illness that showed that about half had uh, low plasma T4s and about a quarter had high TSH. And you can see that either one of these two findings, um, well, at least the elevation of TSH, would be expected to be associated only with hypothyroidism. But in fact, uh, they also meant to, they went on to do other uh, multivariate analyses uh, and found that the intact male was more likely to have a low T4, the Labrador Retriever and the Toy Poodle um, were more likely to have a low T4. And of course, any degree of illness from moderate to severe, particularly severe, led to lower total T4. We've actually measured total T4 in the context of the ICU and find that most many of those are just undetectable. So the conclusion is that in addition to disease severity, the male sex, high age, and certain breeds are associated with uh, thyroid hormone axis uh, alterations that lead to low T4 in non-thyroidal diseases. Now, one reason for this, as was shown by Pichota in 2012, is that in non-thyroidal illness, not true in healthy and in hypothyroid animals, there can be an alteration, a reduction. Uh, one of the important uh, dominant thyroid hormone binding proteins in the serum, and that's called TTR or transthyroidin, previously called thyroxin binding prealbumin. And the lowering of this, as you can see, in the between the hypothyroid and the non-thyroidal illness uh, can, conditions may explain why total T4 uh, is actually reduced during non-thyroidal illness. So their conclusions were that it's reduced and therefore the low T4 that we see can lead to T4s that one might also see with uh, primary hypothyroidism. But realize that they're not, that this is not thyroid illness by its definition is not associated with uh, thyroid dysfunction. Let's now talk about the effect of drugs and thyroid uh, function. The first thing to note is that glucocorticoids, particularly in high dosage dosages and given chronically, can lead to a lowering of total T4 uh, and generally in this situation free T4 is and TSH remain unchanged. Sulfonamides, given at particularly high doses used in dermatology, can cause hypothyroidism. That means that the actual total T4 or free T4 are low and TSH can be elevated. And uh, this is a transient situation associated with the drug administration, basically because sulfonamides are goitrogens. That is, they interfere uh, with thyroid hormone production, like methimazole does and when we use it for treating hyperthyroidism. Phenobarbital, the anticonvulsant drug, uh, given chronically, can lead to mild falls in total T4 and free T4, where TSH generally remains normal. Uh, Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs tend to lead to T4 and um, TSH to fall, in the case of carprofen, and free T4 stays normal. And finally, the uh, behavior modifying drug clomipramine will see a mild fall in uh, total T4 and free T4, whereas TSH stays normal. So, what, what are some of the things we can summarize about interpreting just total T4? Firstly, if it's normal, when you suspect hypothyroidism, it generally rules out hypothyroidism with about 90% certainty. If it's low and you suspect hypothyroidism, it does not confirm hypothyroidism. If it's low and you know there's non-thyroidal illness or other drugs, realize that both may depress the values, so use additional tests. And finally, if 
the, the total T4 is low and you don't have any reason to believe that non-thyroidal illness or drugs are present uh, causing this problem, you probably want to confirm or rule out hypothyroidism by using additional tests and we'll talk about TSH and the measurement of free T4. So this brings us to TSH, measurement of TSH, which has been around for over 20 years now with a sp canine-specific assay. And the first thing we want to say is that it's a poor screening test. We've already alluded to this because about anywhere from 15 to 25 percent, in some people's hands as much as 40 percent of hypothyroid dogs will not have an elevated TSH. It's in the normal range. And so this gets to why. Um, some of the reasons are that dogs are different from humans. TSH increases early in disease and then falls with chronic disease, as you can see in the right-hand panel. A study uh, of Espinera in 2008 showed that animals with hypothyroidism for three years, uh, their t total TSH values went from as high as almost five down to about one. So. This suggests that there's some alteration, uh, I, don't, I hesitate to use the word exhaustion of the pituitary, but you have a reduction of TSH production under the same circumstance. And the other thing we know is that, uh, as shown on the left-hand panel, is that there's a pulsatile release of TSH, uh, shown in, in the red at the top, and to some in hypothyroid dogs that generally uh, the pulsatility, though, doesn't overlap norm their normal range uh, shown in, in euthyroid animals. Less of pulsatility, but some of the total T4 in these animals. So, uh, total TSH, though, it's important uh, to recognize is that a high value adds specificity to a low T4, total T4, or free T4. Let's now take a look at uh, T3. And I want to re-emphasize in, in the graphic on the right that T3 can be produced. In fact, at least 50% of it in the dog uh, is produced locally in the tissue. And much of it remains within the cell, therefore not necessarily reflected by what you see in the circulation. So um, for this reason... The, even though it's the most active hormone, the serum levels correlate poorly with the clinical condition. Extrathyroidal tissues have these mechanisms to produce T4 to T3 or to take T4 and, and not convert it to T3 but to reverse T3. And these mechanisms, when the thyroid glands are failing and T4 is not being produced in adequate amounts, the thyroid gland adjusts its production uh, to make more T3. Therefore, it gets more bank for, for the iodide value, if you will, and um, so more T3 is made in early thyroid failure. This also tends to make T3 stay normal for much longer than it would uh, otherwise. And finally, we know that, that total T3 antibodies are very common in hypothyroid and are much more common than total anti-T4 antibodies. And therefore, uh, sometimes this alters the total T3 values that you see on radio amino assay. And all of these three things together tends to make uh, for the fact that measuring total T3 on a routine basis provides very little routine clinical value.